what we did a, mon a moment ago is, was very theoretical. This is not a proper JSON file. We've got comments and JavaScript in there. This wasn't a real file, but it was there hopefully to kind of get you to understand what we're going to deal with. We can have a very simple JavaScript file, which is just simple name and value pairs. We can have a JavaScript file. One file could define one person, so john.json would be everything here. Uh, Alberto.json would be everything there. Or we can have the most complex one, which is one file is full of a lot of data, just kind of subdivided into multiple pieces of data. So I'm going to close that file. And instead, let's go to File, New. And we'll do Save As. Save it in this JSON start file, and we will call it networks.json, J-S-O-N, and set your save as type also to JSON, which I don't see in the list here, but... Oh, very bottom? It's not alphabetical. Oh, mine's not there either, but that's okay. I, I'll set mine in the language. Nope, not for me. In any event, if you see JSON in there, I guess it's at the end. If you see it, select it. I'm going to have to select just text, and then I'll set my language. So Networks.json. Well, this is going to be about, we're going to create an app to have some a little fun with social networks. So also, just to confirm, language, J for JSON. Let me show you the end result of what we're about to create. I've given you nine pictures. We're going to write some JSON code and then HTML code and JavaScript code. This is the social network randomizer. It's going to be a simple button, random network. We're going to click it. It'll pop up with a random social network, SoundCloud, Pinterest, Google+, etc. What we will see is a picture, the name of the network. We will see text that can pop up based on the network, and an active link to go to an example of the network. Well, that's a bunch of data collected. The name of the network, the link to the network, the description of the network, the picture of the network. All of that data is collected in JSON format for all of these nine <coughs> networks. Then with a click of a button, JavaScript is going to randomly pick one of these networks to display. So we have to build our JSON schema, our JSON format. We're going to invent how this is going to be saved. And then via JavaScript, we're going to load that information and display it on screen. So this will cover various aspects, using, using JSON for real, then using JavaScript to connect to a JSON file, and to display it. So JSON uh, is a way to display database information. And this will tie us stronger as the class goes in to get back into the comic book database eventually. And the value again of JSON is that so many websites out there use it. If you want to make an app that connects to Facebook, Facebook is going to give you data in JSON format. Flickr will do that. Twitter, you know, all of these online repositories of data will oftentimes give you format in JSON, give you data in JSON format. And if you can understand what you're looking at, you can do something with it. Because this raw data right here is just data, this data, 
it's just text, but via the JavaScript and HTML and such, we can process it to make it look meaningful or do something meaningful. So in our JSON file, we're going to start off with the curly brackets. Everything in this file will be JSON. Let's break that into multiple lines so we can read it. Quotes, social. All the collections of data of these social networks will be listed here space, colon, square brackets. So I'm going to list nine social networks. All, all those individual social networks, I have to store the picture, the name, the description, the link. I have to store all of those pieces of data as one collection. And all of that will be multiple social networks. Let's break those curly braces into multiple lines. Tab, and we'll have our first social network. This is a group that defines one social network. I'm going to break that as well. We have the name of the social network. For the moment, we'll just put generic x comma. We need to have a desk or description. We need to have the, uh, the graphic. What's that? Are you naming them or is there, is there a naming convention? Are they universal? This is, we're making it up. That's one of the great things about JSON. We can name these fields however we want. Uh, here, description. You could write description, which would be more obvious maybe. But we're making all of this up. The name of the social network, the description of this network, the graphic of this network. So we can make it all up. And then the URL. the network. When we did this a little while ago, we had set up a person, last name, first name, age, address. Then later on I said, oh, I've got, I've got an idea. Let's also add profile picture. Well, that profile picture only applied to one person. Alvarez. It never applied to the other people because those other people were never defined to have these fields. So this is the downside of JSON. We can make any fields we want, but we need to have those fields defined early on because if later on we get an idea to add more fields, we have to manually create these fields for all of these five users, 50 users, 100 users. So this schema S-C-H-E-M-A, this schema, this scheme, this structure is something we have to have thought of and defined early on because it'll be more cumbersome to redefine it later. So while we can make up these fields however we want, we should have the fields set up as soon as possible early on. Let's copy this chunk. This defines one social network. I'm not going to paste it nine times yet, but copy that, add a comma, and paste one more example. <coughs> so I've got a collection of data for one of the social networks, comma, another collection. This is still in memory. You don't have to copy it again. You can continue to paste. We'll paste in a moment. Let's do two networks. We've got a name of one network, YouTube. This is what will be displayed in the HTML file we will create eventually. A description for YouTube. The long form 
video network. Get back to graphic in a moment. Uh, and then a link to YouTube. HTTP colon slash slash youtube.com slash let's say example PMD Interactive or any valid address to YouTube. another network, Vine. Um, it's kind of actually extinct, but we'll still use it. Uh, short form video network. We're going to use Vine even though Vine isn't really relevant anymore because I have a picture of Vine for us to use. So short form video network. Graphic, we'll get back to that in a moment, and then an address. Vine.co not .com, .co, PMD Interactive. So later, if I'm pulling this data out of this file, it would be data.social, brackets, zero, to give me the data of the zeroth social network. If I wanted the address of the second social network, Data dot social brackets one dot URL like we saw in the other file. Graphic again, this is just a reference to a picture that exists somewhere in the server, quote unquote. The server of this project is your folder. This folder, JSON start, there's the network's JSON file, and we want to refer to these different pictures. These different pictures, if you view this via icons, are the icons of the social networks. They can be named anything you want. I named them very simply pick 0, 1 through 9. Um, but I want to show the YouTube graphic or associate the YouTube graphic with the YouTube object. I want to associate the Vine graphic with the Vine object. So here in the code, it's simply going to be pick 01.ping, PNG. The second picture, pick 02.ping. This is a database, but it's known as a uh, a NoSQL database or a flat database. How many of you have had any experience in other classes in, in any kind of database? Only a couple of people. Um, so most of us are starting with a blank slate. That's good. But if you've used databases before, you might have used relational databases. The new generation of a new generation of databases for web and mobile apps nowadays is something called a NoSQL database. Classic databases, relational databases, had one table related to another. This group of information is related to this group of information. That's the classic relational database. This modern kind of database doesn't have that sort of relation. It's flat, meaning that here's all of the data. It's all related to this one social network. Here's all of this data, all related together to this one social network. And all of this is all information about a social network. Now, don't write this, but we could have then also done comma, users. Don't write this, this is just an example. And have a whole bunch of users here. Curly braces, last name, password, picture, etc., etc. So all of the data is in one file. There's no <coughs> relationship like a relational database between this table and that table, but this is a whole collection, a whole table, so to speak, of user data, a whole table, a whole collection of social network data, and it's specific data. Don't write that. We're not going to deal with users, just social networks. We're going to do this for the other networks that we have here. Uh, not all of them yet. We'll do um, 
just to save time. We'll do um, four of them. You should still have it in memory, hopefully. If you didn't copy anything else, it's still in memory. Here's a pro tip. Let me teach you about the clipboard. If you copy something, it stays in there forever until you copy something else. So it's still in my memory. I didn't copy anything else. I can still paste. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time copying again. It's still in memory unless you copied something else. So the next network. What's the next network? Twitter. So we will fill in the name for Twitter. Don't forget that comma. We've added a new object, a new value pair after bind comma Twitter. Name of that one is Twitter. Some sort of description for Twitter, 140 character missives. It's graphic, pick three. And some link to Twitter. I'm just going to put a bunch of examples of the various social networks of, of my company. Twitter.com slash PMB Interactive. We'll do one more comma at the end of that object, paste. Very important to put these commas here, um, or else you don't have valid JSON data. The next one is Google+. Plus. Let's say the Google social network. Graphic is pick four and an address google.com slash plus PMD interactive. We'll do the other ones later. This is this is enough for the moment. We're creating this JSON file. We're gonna then create an HTML file to connect to this data, to pull this data into the JSON file. Imagine this is data on a server. And then we need to use HTML, CSS, JavaScript to connect to that data and pull it in and do something with it. Question? Uh, I have a situation where we have our folder separated and we have the folder for JSON. Hmm. Does the tab Yes. Yes, let me show you here. So, so let's say you have a folder of JSON and a folder of pictures. So. So if I've got my JSON file in a JSON folder, most likely I have to do dot dot slash pictures slash pic. If I'm in the folder of JSON, I need to get out of the folder of JSON. That's the dot dot slash. That's taking out one level. And then I need to go to my pictures folder and then find the picture. If I had this JSON file in, on the root level, and then I have a pictures folder, then it would most likely just be pictures slash pick four. If all my pictures are in a pictures folder on the same level as my JSON file, then that would be the path. This can technically also work um, if it's on a server, some other server, if I have the address, HTTP, my server, dot biz slash pics slash pick four. So any reference to a picture that exists anywhere on my server on a publicly facing web server, I can link to it. <coughs> Google Plus, when it gives you a web address, has the plus. No other, uh, no other uh, social network that I've seen has that. Everyone else is, you know, twitter.com slash your name, vine.com slash your name. But Google Plus, they require the plus in front of your name. So this is our, this is our JSON file for the moment. Let's save that. Confirm that you've got commas between each network except for the last one. Confirm that the whole thing is wrapped around a curly brace. Remember, click on it and it shows you at the beginning. 
and then confirm that you've got square brackets that are wrapping around all of these four networks, which are the social field. All of this data, which you, then you can collapse. Well, all of this data is related, is associated with that one field, social. We're going to create a simple HTML file, nothing fancy at all, simply um, a button and, uh, and a div to display the results. And then we're going to write some extensive uh, JavaScript to connect to the file, to load the data, to process the data, to display it randomly and all that fun stuff. So save this file and let's go to File New. Let's create a new file, save as, let's call it index.html, standard name of an HTML file, index.html, So we have a brand new blank HTML file, which we need to create a very quick 10 lines of standard HTML. Remember this, HTML, head, body, the meta car set. title, social networks, and h1. Social network randomizer. Okay, so um, we're going to have a button which will do all the work of connecting to the file, pulling the data out, and processing it. And then we're going to have a div that will display the information for the user. So we'll create just a simple button, button tag. Let's say Randomize. This needs an ID, BTN random, so that we can use the JavaScript to create a, 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 a JavaScript object so that we can click, so we can attach an event handler so that it, it uh, is um, active. And then a div, 
to display that network. ID so that we can reference it in the the JavaScript we'll call this div social. Now we're going to test this when we do run. Let's test it in Firefox. If you're used to Chrome, there's actually a little bit of a, not a bug, but let's test it in Firefox because <laughs> Chrome is going to be very strict in that we're trying to load JSON from a file that's not on a server and it'll get confused. Firefox is a little more lenient and it'll let us connect to a JSON file that's not on a real server just fine. So you will get errors and the project will not work at the moment in Chrome. If we had it on a server, it would be just fine. But Firefox is not going to be so strict. So if you launch this in Firefox, nothing special. You're just going to see you know, your text button. Button doesn't do anything yet. And then of course F12, we're going to be looking at the console a lot. You can leave your console at the bottom or move it to the right. What will happen is then a few dozen lines of, of JavaScript. So before the end of body, start a script block. Just separating that JavaScript block here. One line just for visibil visibility, my JavaScript follows. Now we don't have jQuery mobile. We don't have jQuery. We have plain old JavaScript. So some of these Java, some of these jQuery commands we were using on the previous projects won't work because we need to connect to the jQuery library. We're not going to bother with it. Sometimes a project can be done very quickly and simply without extra uh, libraries. So we'll do this with plain old JavaScript. Um, I want to start off with open parentheses, open parentheses, semicolon. Um, this is going to create, I might have mentioned it before, uh, comment back here, immediately invoked function expression, also known as an iffy, pronounced iffy. iffy. Immediately invoked function expression. This is a very common practice of modern JavaScript because if, if we're using plain old JavaScript, we have a, a, the set of commands we can use built into JavaScript. If we then start to connect to jQuery framework, Angular framework, Ionic framework, uh, the, 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 UE network, uh, the UE framework, if we connect to all of these other libraries, there could be conflicts in that one library expects syntax in a certain way, and another library expects it in another way, or variable name conflicts and such. So if we write our code in a way like this, this helps prevent some of these conflicts. Short answer, modern best way to write JavaScript. conflicts between libraries and to, make, and to write efficient code. The code will also process. Many web browsers or, or devices will process the code a little more efficiently here too. inside of the first parentheses function, open close parentheses, open close curly brace. So we're wrapping a function in parentheses. We're then immediately executing what's in the parentheses. All of this is one statement of 
function immediately execute. Okay, an anonymous function, and then all of our code is going to go inside those curly braces. Those curly braces, then I will break that. So I like to write it in one line first, and then break it. When we created the Visual Studio project, it automatically had that. Maybe I never really know, maybe I never really mentioned it, but it was already there. Line one or so has that, and then the last line has that. So we, we wrote it manually in one line, and then we broke it into multiple lines, and then all our code will go in there. Double quotes, use strict, semicolon, activate, a okay, strict note. Um, other programming languages are very strict in your syntax and in the way you use in the way you use the code. JavaScript is a very loose language for good and for bad. If you come from other languages that are very strict, um, where you have to, for example, set the type of your variable. In other languages, you say var name colon string. That variable can only be used for strings in other languages. In JavaScript, you create a variable and it can be used for anything. Some people find that amazing, other people find that horrifying. Because if you set a variable for a certain thing, it should only do that certain thing, other people will say. And in JavaScript, like, who cares? We'll use it how we need to use it. And you can get into fights with people on either way, which is right or wrong. They're all right, they're all wrong. Use strict is going to try to make, then, the processing of our JavaScript a little more strict. It might give us more errors, which is good, because then it'll help us debug our code better. Our code will run, will run just fine without use strict. But this is another thing that is more commonly used nowadays, too. Let's activate the strict mode so that the browser or the app processes your code in a, in a more strict way so that hopefully then it's better with less errors. So those lines right there are sort of just like common boilerplate, do this all the time. And we got that automatically when we... Um, when we created that Visual Studio project. Next line. We're going to create some variables, some JavaScript objects that define the various HTML nodes. I want to create a JavaScript variable for that button and a JavaScript variable for that div. So VAR L B T N random. Why am I not using a dollar at the beginning? We don't have jQuery, exactly. Therefore, we have to then say equal to document.get element by ID. We can't use the shorthand dollar symbol. We don't have jQuery. So I'm not using the dollar in front of the variable. It's a plain old JavaScript variable. No dollar. And I'm using plain old JavaScript to get an ID. Quotes, no pound sign, btn random. We have the pound sign if we were using the dollar selector with jQuery. All right, this is this is a comment here, but the other way would have been L B T N random equal dollar quotes pound btn random if we had jQuery. Write less, do more. They're both equivalent, basically. Make sure that's a comment or you'll get errors because we don't have jQuery activated. Comma at the end there because I want to define another variable. L div social equal to document dot get element by ID. Remember, ID only has one capital I, not capital I, capital D. That is an error. Parentheses, semicolon, end of statement, quotes the name of my ID. Or I'm sorry, the div of my, the ID of my div. 
do social. So make sure it's a comma at the end of the first line and a semicolon at the second. Comma, because I'm saying create one variable, comma, and another. The end. I'm finished creating variables. That's why I also don't have VAR here, because I'm borrowing var. After that, we'll create a function. We'll call it fn get social parentheses curly braces. Break that into multiple lines. A little note and function get social. And then the uh, event listener, uh, l btn random dot add event listener. On the event of a click, comma, run the uh, function get social. If we were using J, jQuery, that would have been dollar l b t n random dot on parentheses click comma function get social. Again, no dollar here because we didn't create the variable up there with a dollar, which means we didn't use jQuery. We have the old, the, not old, but the plain old JavaScript add event listener on the event of a click. The new jQuery version or the alternative jQuery version is on click. So both of them will run a function on the event of a click. To see if this is working, let's just do some console output. We clicked. Run it in Firefox. F12 to view your console and click it a few times and you should see the text we clicked. We'll pause there to make sure it's working and we'll get to the good stuff. Confirm my works. Randomize. We clicked. Yep. Let's pause there. Did everyone get some console output? Anyone need a little help? Let's 
So all of this that we have so far uh, regarding regarding um, what was the phrasing? Um, uh, Anna, how did you say it earlier about is this the common way or how, how did you say it earlier when we're talking about JSON? Is this like the standard? Or you said something like that? Whatever the word we're looking for, this is what I would recommend your variables first. Your functions. The convention, okay. This is a convention that I would say for setting up your JavaScript. Variables first, functions next, event handlers last. So you can make a comment up here. Variables. All your functions would be over here. We're only going to use one. Functions. And then your event handlers. And because it's a comment, you could do something fun. Oh, I guess use text fun. You can do something like that so that it stands out. When you're browsing your hundreds of lines of code, that'll stand out. These are the sections of my code. All my variables are here, all my functions are here, event handlers are down here. Optional, of course. The order of this, though, could matter depending on various factors, but often this works best. Create, define your variables early on to create these JavaScript objects of HTML nodes. Create your functions that are going to do something, and then set up, run those functions based on clicking something. Sometimes if you try to do a click before the function exists, if you wrote this handler first, then our function may not work all the time. And because we're using use strict, this is assuming that the function exists before you try to click on it. Without strict, JavaScript can do something interesting, which is you can try to run a function that doesn't exist yet, which could cause errors. So all of this is just setting ourselves up. There's a button, we're going to click it, something's going to happen. The something is going to be in get social. We actually need one more variable. Um, variables in JavaScript can be simple as you know, a word or a number, or an HTML node. And here we're going to create a variable that will help us to connect to a file. So let's back up. We had the L button random, the L div social. At the end of L div social, let's add a comma. Remove that instead of a semicolon. We want one more variable, comma. Common practice is to create an object called XHR. Um, for the moment, I'm blanking what it stands for, but it's something about like transfer, x for transfer or something. We'll make a note. Equal to new, the keyword new, space, XML in capitals, HTTP, capital H, but not the TTP, request, capital R, parentheses and then semicolon. Create a JavaScript object to be able to connect to another file. That's basically what that is. That object will give us the ability to connect with another file. New XML HTTP request. We're creating an object that will let us use the HTTP protocol to request to connect to files. 
to be able to process XML data. Um, so this will let us connect to a file, open, read the data, process it, etc. It's a very powerful thing. I hope at some point if you think about going online and searching for that code and reading the documentation on your own so that you can see all that can be done with it, this is a very common, powerful thing to do to connect to other files, other data. This object will be used inside of the function. After we click the button, let's initiate the process to connect to the file. And in computer, in the, in the world of computers, especially networking, there's all of these steps. Uh, like for myself, if I want to leave this room, I just walk out the door. But for the computer, it would be get up out of my seat, walk to the door, check if the door is unlocked, open the door, step outside, close the door behind me, I am outside. You know, for the computer, we would have to do all of those steps. <laughs> so we have to be very specific. I'm going to drive somewhere. Well, I need to get the keys, turn on the car, press the pedal. For what we're trying to do here is we're going to connect to a file. And again, it sounds easy. We're going to connect to a file. We have various steps that we need to do to be able to connect to the file. We say xhr.open. We're going to use the method, the command open. Set up a way to open a certain file or location. A file on a server, a location, etc. The xhr object has a bunch of these commands. Dot .open, what do we have? Dot .open, dot .onload, dot .send. We have a bunch of commands, a bunch of methods attached to that object. Just like we have the object console, we have the method log, the method, other ones that I never use, but there's like a dozen other console methods. That object has the ability to use these methods. This object has the ability to use this method. This object, we created it right here. A new, ability, a new object to create requests to another file. Dot log then had the um, parameters of what's the message. Dot open needs a few more parameters. In quotes, in all caps, we're going to get. We can get, what are they? There's get, there's post, a couple of other ones. We're going to get. We're going to use the protocol get. This is one way we're going to try to connect to this file via the get protocol, comma. Well, what is or where is the file we're trying to connect to? The JSON file, the one called networks.json. This will work without any more complexity here, but if you had your JSON files in a JSON folder, you would have JSON slash the name of your file. Since we have it all in one simple folder, all my pictures are in the folder, the HTML file is in the same folder, the JSON file is in the same folder, we can write a very simple path. And this last one, I believe this last one is asyn asynchronous true or false. Let us open this file and also do other things at the same time. Um, asynchronous, asynchronously. Let us do more than one thing at once. Uh, I think the default is false, so if it was set to nothing, we'd have to wait for that command to connect to the file before any other JavaScript is processed. With a true, we're saying let us connect and let's do other stuff while we wait for the connection to happen. This actually doesn't really connect. This sets up a way to connect. Just like I said, to walk out the door, I have to specify in a computer language, get the key, unlock the door, open the door, walk out. 
this is again setting ourselves up. Let's set up a way to open a connection with the get format to that file asynchronously to actually connect xhr.send send the request to connect to that file. And we're not sending any extra data in that in that uh, request, so no. Actually sends the request to connect with no extra data. Data that we could send conceivably is a password. Connect to a file with a password to read the data. We're not doing that, we're just sending no data, no data, no extra data. Eventually the data will load <coughs> xhr.onload. This one isn't exactly a method, it's, it's a state, so no parentheses, it's set to equal. Eventually there will be an event of onload, just like we had the event of click. On the event of clicking the button, do something else. On the event of the data has loaded, do something. What's that? Yes, that's the short human answer, but then we have to write the dozen lines of code for the computer to understand what that is. And those lines will be in a function, in an anonymous function. We have a function called getSocial that we can run anytime we want. We could kind of set this up the same way to create a separate function that processes the processes the data that's loaded. Or a common way to do it also is if you don't have to do that much special things, that many special things, you can run up this which is known as an anonymous function. Let's make a note above here. After loading the data from networks.json. run an anonymous function. an anonymous function. I'm going to break this into multiple lines. console.log xhr.response text If we manage to connect to the file, the file we loaded it into this file. I want to sh I want to display that text that we pulled out of the network object in the console. Let's save it and run it. Check your console and click the button. You should see the raw data getting pulled out of that network's JSON file in your console. Response text has a capital T. Be careful here. Capital T for text. Let me check mine. Randomize. Click on that. First it says we clicked. Then it has all the raw data. If you get this big scary message at the end, don't worry about it. 
but we get all of this data in the console. <coughs> Let's pause there. We should get the data from the JSON file in the console. We'll take our second break here also. It's 8.25-ish. We'll take a break until 8.35. Let's confirm that this works at this point, and then we'll do something with this data.